Welcome back to the channel. I received a question on my Find Peaks video on how could we find the local minima for each of the peaks. Recall in that video, we were using the scipy.signal find peaks method to locate the essentially the local maxima. And we defined some parameters around signal to noise and, and other features of that peak that would help us define what we consider a peak, maybe versus high frequency noise and other artifacts in our data. Well, in this video, we're going to use another scipy.signal method called argrelmin to find the local minima each of these peaks. And if there's min, we also have max, and I'll demonstrate both of those in this video. But first, let's look at the documentation for this method. If you look here, we have our scipy.signal argrelmin method, and it takes in data as an ND array. And there we can specify the axis, it's optional. And more importantly, one of the most important features is this order. And this will determine how many points on each side we need in order to make the comparison to find the local minima or maxima of a particular range within the data. And then those data are returned as a tuple of ND arrays. And this video will use that feature to filter our data frame and annotate our data. Let's get started. So we are going to do this by setting up our library, importing our data which would be NIR data. So our index would be the wavelength and then our Y values would be the intensity of that spectrum. And here is a plot of that data. You see, this is a very typical spectrum for IR spectroscopy or NIR spectroscopy where I'm plotting intensity versus nanometers. So in this video, we're gonna figure out how we could annotate these low points, these local minima between these peaks as we did in our original video. As part of our imports, I am importing scipy.signal as S, and this would be the module we'll use to access our methods. And so we can use s.argrelmin. And as we saw in our documentation, we will pass in data. In this case, the data is a series I'm showing here. And so the argument in this method will be df.values. And now we have our array of indices where we have our local minima. I mentioned before that we have this order argument where we can specify the number of peaks on either side. And so while looking at this array, let me show you what this order will do. By default, the order is one. And so just any local minimum where one peak to the left and one peak to the right of our center point is higher, this will then return that middle point as the local minima. If we adjust this to five, you can see that we have far fewer local minima because it's looking for more points across that range where five on either side of that center point, we have to fit that criteria. So let's save this variable as min filter. And so let's also copy this and make a variable called max filter. And we use the same value for order and then we'll adjust this as we make our plot. And so we have two filters and we can make our figure. So to make the figure, let's start with our original plot and we'll just update it with our new annotated data. So we have our original plot that we showed before and let's make a few tweaks to that plot. Let's set the line style to dashed. We will reduce the width and set the alpha to 0 0.4. So this just make it a little bit easier to see as we then add more data to our plot. So the next step would be to filter our series that I've called DF. And to do that, we can use the filter along with our iloc method. And so here we will just pass in min filter and this will return our filter data. Again, where the index is the nanometer value and the Y or the values are the Y values of the intensity. And so we can take advantage of that for both of our series. And so let's make a new plot to do this. We will make a scatter plot and the data frame will be if.ilog and let's just make this the min filter. Next, we would just set the marker size to 75 and add that to our data. You can see now with an order of five, we have all of our local minima there. To me, this is sort of overfitting the data. Um, these aren't all realistic for the data set. And of course, we could smooth the data that would help us, but we also have this ability to adjust the order. So here we use the order of five. Let's try an order of 20. This will require more points on either side before it defines a local minima. And this seems to be a little bit more realistic. We're not catching that little peak there, for instance, like we did before. And so let's use the same value for the local maxima. And we'll copy this line here. And let's change the shape so that we know what we're looking at. So we'll have max filter and let's change the marker to S. 
And so the squares are the local maxima and the circles are the local minima. And it appears that 20 might not be enough. So let's set this to 25 and see if that spacing makes more sense. And it appears that it does. And so with our arg, rel, min, and max, we have an ability now to identify the local minima and maximum. Now, ideally you would pair this with other signal processing techniques to smooth the data, apply other filters, and we could come up with a really nice way to index the local minima and maximum within a particular spectrum, return that or develop new features based on those points. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.